going to work on a different project today. This was inspired by a photo that I was in Wood Magazine. This is one that's for sale on eBay. But I, what it is is a dice tower, just like the name. And what you do is you drop your dice down the throat, and it jumbles them up and spits them out the bottom. This is the look at uh, the finished product before we actually get there. So I'm going to design something that simulates what you just saw so I can cut it out on the CNC. What I did, I opened up, as you can see, my VCarb Pro. And in VCarb Pro, I laid it out. I got some 2 before scrap 2 before because this is the first time I've made one of these towers. And I recommend you do the same thing. Uh, measured them, of course, 3.5 by 12 inches because I wanted to screw them down on either end to hold it in place because that would be cutting out a lot of material. So I made a couple boxes and put them side by side so that the boxes were my container, if you will, or my 2 by 4 And once I did that, I drew a dice because I need a dice to fall down in between this thing. So I have to make sure that I make it so that the dice will fall in that opening. You can see here I'm making the box for the two before, and it'll be three and a half by 12. It gives me space on either end to screw it down. And then I'm going to center it in the middle. I'm actually going to carve both of these at the same time. Uh, when you see the video in the shop, there's only one of them. And the reason, reason there's only one is I've unscrewed that one, hit pause on the machine, and unscrewed the one on the right and was sanding it while the one on the left was finished machining. So I'm lining this up and dropping it in. And I did this at three and a quarter. I did that because I figured I'd smooth off or use the joiner to take off a little bit on each side so that the two before became a nice finished piece of wood. These two befores are really rough lumber. Uh, they're not finished lumber. So the next one I do, I'll actually finish it first and then size it and then fit it because this is because I did it in reverse there's extra material that I have to cut off and these two are going to lock together like the one did on eBay uh, I've got some magnets that fit into a pre-fit hole that I'll be drilling on here and those magnets will actually hold us together so we're going to see the mirrored surface of these two parts machine what I'm doing now is zooming in so that I can get these three and a half or three and a quarter inch boxes lined up as perfectly as I can. And the more you zoom in, the shorter the distance that your left and right keys allow you to move. So if you zoom in really, really tight, you can actually move it in micro increments instead of trying to do it with your mouse. So that works out pretty good. See, I'm going to zoom in again, and if you look, you can say, wait a minute, they're not really lined up, and then I bounce it over and make them fit. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. What I do next is just make an arc. And I found that art, making an arc really isn't the best way to do it. Uh, what I'm also going to do is put in some guidelines. So I'm going to get rid of this tool and put my guidelines in first. I want to basically stay down an inch from either end. And that's where my tooling will work so it doesn't cut into the screws that I put into this thing to hold it down. Uh, so as you can see there, I put two guidelines in about an inch from either side. And as you're doing your guidelines, if you notice, there's numbers that come up that tell you where your guideline is. Now I'll go back and use my arc tool. I found after I get this done that the arc tool, about halfway through it, that the arc tool wasn't the best what tool to use. Next to the arc tool is a spline tool, and that works a lot better, as you'll see when I get in here. So this is the first place that I messed up. Uh, one of many. I mess up on projects all the time, but, you know, that's the fun of doing them. You learn by your mistakes. Well, some of us do. 
And what I'm going to do, this is the throat where you drop the dice down into it. And as you can see, it's kind of hard to make the circle that I want to make. Then I realize, wait, I'll go this way. And as you can see, I finally get something that's acceptable. And then I'm making an arc off there. Uh, you'll see when I use the spline tool on the other side that it works out better. It doesn't give me that sharp point. That sharp point machine's okay, but it's also easy to break off. And it looks better when you have a rounded nose on there instead of a pointed nose. Maybe that's why so many people have plastic surgery. I don't know. Not too many of them do it with a CNC, though. <laughs> anyway, so... This is the left side that's it's going to hit and bounce around. So the critical thing here is my dice are 5 eighths of an inch across. So when you make your second one on the right hand side, it's better to, uh, you notice it's not connected there. I made an arc out of nowhere. And I'm going, this arc tool is just not working the way I want it to, to work. Now it's got to come down and to an opening, so it ejects the part, the dice out. All right. So there we go. That's the left side, and I'll have to clean that up. I'll use some other tools, obviously, to join them together. I'm going to do the node, and then I'm going to use the join tool to join the vectors, and I'm going to delete the one random one that's out there in space. <clears throat> I did this during a class, so uh, it worked out pretty good. The student got to use a bunch of different tools. Yeah, I'm still using the arc tool. I haven't woken up to the fact that the spline might be a little better. So if you got comments or questions, make sure you let me know. So now I'm going to close this. I'm going to get the spline tool. Here I'm going to make my dice. They're 0 0.625 and 0 0.625 because the dice, sets, as you know, are six-sided and pretty much square. Occasionally some have rounded corners, some don't. So you want to make it so that two to four dice can fall through that opening without getting stuck. Because if you got a dice tower and your dice are constantly getting stuck, when you drop them down in there, that's not much fun. You want to be able to drop them and they'll scoot out the bottom. That'll be a little, little more enjoyable as you're working. So, I made them 6.25 and 6.25, and there's my dice. Now the question is, will it fit through that hole? Well, you have to make it so that it, the maximum distance, which would be the diagonal, would be the maximum length. So it has to be at least that far apart. And you want to make it actually more than that. It should be about an inch throw it across there. That way when you drop them, they'll bounce around but not get stuck. I'm moving the dice around a little bit to see if it'll fit through that throat. And it's a little tight or constricted. So you're going to see the next thing I'm going to do is select the arc itself. I'm rotating it, make sure it has enough room to bounce around, but it really doesn't. So I'm taking the arc and changing the angle there to open that throat up. But that shrank my opening, as you see up at the top. So I'm going to try to adjust that as well so that the arc changes, maybe a little wider arc. I'll we'll get it so that I can get it down in there. Next, what I'm going to do is do a node edit. <clears throat> the node edit allows you to move that center point, if you will, and moves your start point. It lets you move your stuff around. See it? And new, do it by node editing. See, that opens that throat up so that when those dice hit, they'll bounce around and not get stuck in there and fall. Gravity works wonders unless you give some constrictive space. Now what I'm going to do is use a different tool. This is a spline tool, and I recommend using this one to start with. Uh, remember, I shot this video while I was teaching a class, 
and I use different tools to show some of the neat things you can do with it. Um, the spline tool, you can just make your curves just about any way you want. Um, it's kind of cool. Let them bounce around and see I've got a nice wide throat there. I'm going to throw it back over against the wall and let it drop again. So it gives me a little more control on how my dice and my lines go and how my arcs go. I'm going to come out. This is going to be the chute that dumps the dice out. Now if you look at it, um, that's kind of flat, so the dice are liable to get stuck down there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do again is edit. And one of the things you can do when, once you do a spline tool is you can use your benzene or bezine. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Your curve. See those handles there? And you click on that, you can actually move the point itself. And you click on those handles that stick out, and you can change the shape of the curve itself changes the arcs. So now we've got a little steeper grade there so when the dice land at the bottom hopefully they'll scoot out the bottom. So that allows us to do, do that. So I recommend using your spline tool and using your handles when you're in a node mode so that you can edit all the curves. You can edit where your positions are. You can add dots. You can do all kinds of neat stuff in, in um, edit mode if you use a spline tool. So you, your nodes can be modified and moved and shifted. So now this dice should fall out of there and bounce around them and come out the bottom not stuck at the same number that they were when they dropped in. They could because you know it's supposed to be arbitrary. Now what I'm doing is making a place or a position that I can use my storage for my dice. So I want a hole in there someplace wide enough that my dice will fit in it. And it's going to be deep enough that I can put two dice on each side. And maybe even five dice all together. So that will be storage for my Yahtzee dice, if you will. If I'm playing Yahtzee with this, it gives me the advantage of the storage area built into the device. So I don't have to go looking for my dice. Keep in mind, I mentioned before, that the top area and the bottom area are where I'm going to drill some holes and screw the block of wood in place. And also keep in mind, this is my first attempt ever to make a dice tower. So we're going to be experimenting a little bit and see how it works. That's why I'm cutting it out of 2x4 instead of black walnut like the one I showed you. Now if you look, those are all connected together. I'm going to hit join anyway because I have an upper vector there that was uh, part of an arc. And then I clicked on it and carried it down. But I want to make them sure they're joined together as one piece. What I'm doing is cutting an area or extending the box so that I have a pocket. Uh, the pocket tool is what I'm going to use to cut this all out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we'll do is come down, join that together, and we'll hit the space bar to release it and then we're going to go down to the bottom left side and do the same thing. We're going to come down over to the left and join those two lines together. <clears throat> now once we've done that we will select all and join the vectors together. So once again I need to, it would have been easier to use my zoom selected tool and they would fit perfectly. Now I'm using my scroll on the mouse to try to fit it in there. Keep in mind that while I'm doing this I'm also explaining to a, a student what I'm doing and trying to get them to understand what I'm doing and answering questions. So some of the moves I make don't make sense you know, primarily because I, I'll get a question and say well why can't you do it this way and then I'll demonstrate something. I've tried to edit most of those points out. Now I'll do a select all and um, you'll see it come up here. Edit, select all, selection tool. And I should have used or could have used control A. Uh, if you use your hotkeys when you're teaching somebody, they can't see the keyboard normally and it makes it a little more difficult for them to follow. And keep in mind there's two boxes 
here that are, uh, how do I say, <laughs> not part of what I want to cut out. Those are the examples of where the two before is. So I select that box and then hit shift and select the other box. And then the two items I actually want to carve out have been selected. This two before, after it's been planed, usually drops from uh, one and a half down to one and three eighths or one and a quarter. So you have to be careful to measure your, actually prep your wood first, then measure it, and then it'll fit exactly. You notice I had selected the mirror tool. Now what I'm going to do is actually save the project. Uh, this does not, VCAR Pro does not, at least I don't have it checked, so that auto saves. Because sometimes when I'm experimenting, I like to go back and pull the old original file back up because um, you make mistakes and you can wipe out a bunch of stuff if you're not careful. And using the mirror tool, can give you some odd results if you're not careful. So I've saved to this point. So the file is saved. I'm also going and getting a part that I'm going to need. I made uh, a cribbage board a while ago and in that cribbage board is a file that I'm going to use. What I'm looking for is a file that contains magnets. See it right there? I've got one. That's the magnet hole that I'm going to use to cut out some magnets that I have. That way I don't have to go back and measure the size and depth of the magnet because it's already there. So now I've got the size. Now I need to look at the depth. So to look at the depth, I have to actually open the tool to cut the magnet. And if you look at it, you see it's highlighted. That's the pocket three uh, that cuts out the magnet hole. And if you go up to the top, you can see it's 0.13. Well, I'm going to make it actually a little bit deeper, and I use a quarter inch tool to cut it out. So that's what I need to know. That's the information. So I went to this drawing, got the information that I needed. Now I'll go back to where I originally was and open the dice tower. Now that I have that information, I can go down you see the last thing that I opened, number four there, is the dice tower. Now I can paste that. I just did a right mouse click and I pasted, pasted the cutout size I need for. I'm going to paste another one. I'm going to put three of them in here. I put four on the cribbage board and that baby is hard to get apart. These are powerful magnets. So I'll just put three on this and the uh, keep in mind, this is a prototype. If it doesn't work out well, I'm going to put it lower instead of higher. Um, we'll see. I'm going to end up putting four in this later on, but I'm not. So the next step, actually, I, once I have those, is I can cut those out or do the pocket for the uh, other one. doesn't matter which one I do first. But sometimes I, have, I didn't write these numbers down, so you know how it is. I'm going to mirror it over. Keep in mind, I do not really want to mirror the piece of wood. So I'm going to deselect that one and deselect this one and just mirror over what I have. So I'm going to go to my mirror tool, which is right there, click it, and I'm going to flip it. If you look, see flip? Now it flipped on itself, flipped about the center. I want it to flip about the center of the part. So I'll go up and edit and undo that, and then come down and check that box. Flip about the center. And then when I do that, it'll flip when I click on it. See it? So now it's flipped about the center. So that's a mirror image. So when I fold those on, the, the magnets will line up perfectly. And the hole for the device, or the dice will, the dice tower falling mechanism will line up perfectly and the device for dice storage will line up perfectly. So that's good. Now I can cut them out and I think I'll do uh, the four pockets for the magnets. So 
uh, deselect those. Keep in mind you hold the shift down, down and keep selecting. I'll lock this in place. I'm going to make a pocket. And if you remember, the pocket was 0.13. I'm going to make it a little deeper because the uh, magnets are so strong and they didn't sink all the way down in my cribbage project. So I'm going to sink them down a little bit farther and see how that works. And I'll just cut them out. There's two, three, there's six of them. So all six are selected. I'll name it too so that it's a little easier to find. Magnet, if I can spell it properly. I don't think I'm on the... I shift over on one of these on the keyboard. So it's a magnet's pocket. And I'll hit calculate. There they are. If I preview them, you'll see they're nice shallow holes. Keep in mind I have two boards and not one. But the way I've laid it out, it looks like it's one board. Next, I'm going to do the towers and, at the same time, do the dice storage area. Re the reason for that is they're all cut at the same depth. So I can close this tool, go back to my pocket tool, change my depth. And what I do here is I use the tools built into VCarve Pro to calculate this. I'm going to do 50% overlap and a 0.15 cut, which isn't very aggressive, but I have a very old shark, so it's not as strong as the newer ones. But my depth of cut, you notice my board is 1.5 inches minus, I want to leave three-eighths of an inch. And you notice I mix decimals and fractions, and then hit the equal sign, and it does the calculation for me. So that's pretty slick. I use that every once in a while, uh, especially when I'm teaching, show the, the capabilities there. A lot of times I still try to do the math in my head, but if you can't, there's a calculator built in. Uh, you can put mixed fractions and decimals and hit the equal sign, plus or minus, or divide, and it will come out for you. Now I've named it at the bottom. Dice Tower. Pocket 1. And I can't read it because I have it on a very small screen with bifocals. And I think, yeah, it's misspelled. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm doing this with a student and the keyboard's on my lap so every once in a while my hands are misplaced so I punch the wrong letters. Uh, Okay, so here's a, a view of it carving it out, and there it is. So there's my tumble tower with dice storage and magnets in place. So we'll go to the shop, we'll store this, we'll export it. I'll show you how to export it if you have it, don't know how to do that. Keep in mind I have a CNC shark, so I'll export it with that one picked. And because I have a common quarter inch tool, I can export all of this together as one path, which is kind of nice. So we'll do that next. What you'll see now is I'm going to actually save this. So I've activated, activated my tools to see what they are. And if you come up, they're visible tool paths. So I save them all as one. And what I do when I name my files is I try to make sure that my storage or my file name makes sense. It's a dice tower which I've named it. And next up, you'll notice I tell it what bit size, one quarter inch bit. And in this one, the size of the project is actually three and a half by three and a half, which is seven by 12. But I made it out of two by fours, and that's what I wanted to note. Two by fours by 12 inches long. So then I can cut those and use them in the project to fit in this area. And the CTR stands for center. So I saved it on my flash drive. We're going to take it out in the lab and put it to work and have a little fun with it. We're not going to have all the lab on here, just a short video to show you what's there. What I'm doing there is actually saving again, but I don't actually save it. I cancel it to make sure that it did save on the flash drive. So that's what I'm, I'm doing. We're going to take it, close it, go out in the lab. So that's where we're going to head. If you don't want to watch the lab, no worries. Have a great day, and thanks for watching. 
I didn't take a picture of both of them mounted while they were machining. What has happened is I have taken this one off and sanded it and then I placed it back down so you could actually see how they were lined up when it did the cutting. So it actually cut one piece on the right side and then I hit the pause button on my machine and unscrewed the screw mounts that held it down and then sanded it while the machine cut out the other part. So then we'll flip over so you can see it finishing the other part. Now the first part's removed so you can see it's actually still cutting and I use the vacuum to pull uh, any chips or sawdust away. Keep in mind this is uh, one of the first CNC sharks ever made so it's got to be close to 10 years old. Uh, I bought it from next back then at Next Wave Automation now it's Next Wave CNC. So you can see it and I'll hold up the finished one here so you can see it too. Uh, the goal is to get an inch and a quarter deep the pockets, the magnet pockets, and it, that's been roughly rough sanded. Uh, we're going to chop saw it and put it all together, and I might make another short video that shows there's the throat cleared out so the dice, dice will tumble out. The top has to be cut off so you can drop the dice in the top. So it's working away. Uh, you can That's the beauty of a CNC. While it's doing some of the grunt work, you can actually finish your project and not waste your time. Take care and thanks for watching. Have a good day.